Hello there. On a practical note, I was doing my favourite washing up the other day and I learned something about um, three-centred work and that is that the, the feelings are quite free. When you're doing the washing up, um, you know, your head is conducting your activity and your hands are moving but your feelings can be free and if you're daydreaming whilst you're doing the washing up it's your feelings that are daydreaming but you can direct your feelings to be part of the activity and then you become three-centered. Somehow when you're doing the washing up where your head is aloft and your arms are in front of you then spatially it's quite easy to feel the space of feelings between you. It's sort of laid out one, two, three. It's quite easy to see that and to direct your feelings to correspond to your work. In other words, the feelings merge with the experience of the physical body and the mental plane. So the, the neutralizing force, the third force, is not present. It only emerges during a time of work, meaning being part of the duty. When we look out at this world, what we see is standing pairs like standing stones, the affirming and the denying, the male and the female, at all scales. And it is only the work of man that unites the two. It is only the work of a being that brings into existence the neutralizing force. That is what we must do. Which reminds me of something Gurdjieff said once. He said, In my opinion, the time has not yet come for us to speak about the Gospels. This requires much more knowledge. But from time to time, we will take certain gospel texts as points of departure for our discussions. This will teach you to treat them in the right way and above all to realize that in the texts known to us, the most essential points are usually missing. And why are they missing? Well, they are missing because they have been removed. And they have been removed by people who are mechanical. Because they are mechanical, they do not like the taste of the real, of the third force, and they diffuse everything. Most human beings on the planet will diffuse any piece of truth or light or any, any holiness, they will diffuse it. For them to be initiated into the light and to follow the light, they would need a living teacher, they would need a lot of help. It's not really very easy. And they do their job. It's like they fall to the bottom. They fall to the bottom just like a ball that rolls down the hill. They do it instinctively and they're doing their job. They are marshalling the lower world. They're removing from the lower world anything that isn't there, that is threatening, that doesn't belong there. That sometimes spiritual teachers complain that the world is hard, that the world refuses them, that the world rejects them. People talk like that, like the world rejects the light. The fact is, the light can only enter this world according to the octave. It can only enter people according to the octave. It's not easy. You can't just slap it on top. You can't just tell everybody the truth. There is serious work to be done, careful work that comes from love, that comes from somebody who has done work and shares something. Things can only grow a certain way. That should give us a lot of pause because it is quite difficult to communicate a teaching. It does require a lot of work. It does require theory, a huge investment of time. But if you are a seeker, you have to recognize that whatever you see in the world has been diffused. Your job is to fuse it. Your job is to be the third force and to bring the lightning. Now, some people have questioned whether we are living in the final age of man or an age of terrible descent. The Kali Yuga, one of the four 
cycles of cosmological time from Hinduism, cycles that ascend and descend, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, on and on over eons, thousands of years. And the interesting thing about this is not necessarily whether we're in the Kali Yuga. The interesting thing is why there are only four and not five. That means that this world is caught in the developmental cycle of the Earth herself and the Earth is preventing the organic life going beyond four. It is preventing mankind becoming spiritualized. And it doesn't seem like anything can be done about that. The earth is not ready to become spiritualized and so the organic life is destined to live in the manner it does now. It does seem that the earth has a requirement for a small number of people to reach some spiritual state. But Gurdjieff has shown that it is possible for a three-brained being to accumulate vast amounts of understanding. Much greater than Buddha, if you ask me. Much greater. Life has two rivers. The descending river flowing out to the ocean of nothingness that most people are in. But the way, the great way is the way of the salmon that goes towards the blue, towards the source. And you must go and you must continue going until you drown in the upstream current. That is the only hope. I don't know what it is that makes people do that, but I do know that it is rare. And on this planet, what you see everywhere are pale imitations that come from the intelligence that is able to circulate in the downstream current. The downstream current isn't dead, it still circulates. It still creates a certain kind of energy that's required for the moon. These people, although they are unable to initiate themselves into their own individuality, do still create some kind of energy that feeds the moon. And so we live in a quite strange threshold planet where a small number are going to make it and of those who make it many of them I think will be unable to move they may be awake or aware but they will not be fully equipped men as Gurdjieff said they may be immortal things but what is the good of it in other words, the picture we have of religion and the, the journey is quite decayed. You cannot speak the truth to another person. That is impossible. To use the instrument of speech to communicate truth, you know, it's quite a high level you have to get to. You have to already be three-centered. You already have to be on the path and then you can communicate something. But you cannot talk about freedom, or salvation, spiritual things to people. You know, Yesterday I was watching um, a little video on YouTube created by you know, a very esteemed and senior fourth-way teacher in Britain. And in it, the guy had just um, taken some pages of In Search of the Miraculous, Ospensky's book, and simply converted them into graphics and put some colour on it. And that's it. No personal development, no application of these ideas, and there was no sense that anybody was going to do any actual work like exercises or anything like that. Yeah, the major problem that we live in is that the caste system of the Western world has been destroyed. So what you see everywhere are the Shudras, the lowest people in society. They are riding around in this world 
feeling pretty great because society gives them everything gives them free money gives them silly consumer pleasures and they just ride around destroying everything on this planet what they really want is they want this game to continue once the caste system has broken down the chain of reciprocal maintenance is dead within a country and all the people perish they will fall to the bottom because it is the chain of reciprocal maintenance via the castes that creates the rising current towards the next highest octave you know, i'm really starting to question many things about life and i'm not really convinced that spirituality and spirituality is understood at all the many eyes uh, seem to have developed um, as human beings lived more closely together they weren't able to take wide action in their life and so the being started to grow inwardly and um, as I have said the many eyes seem to be some sort of partial formation in the upper story and for various reasons it just gets stuck up there As people get older, they have more and more of these crystallizations which eventually kill them because the understanding of dissolving those many eyes is not known to human beings, not part of their culture. As the many eyes accrue in populations over time, they have the sense of growing claustrophobia and mechanization. Mechanization, as it is discussed, is really the experience of energy flowing through the hard crystallizations rather than flowing freely like the wind, like the instinct of animals. And so mechanization, materialism, is actually the experience of the hard shifting of energy through the cycling of the false self it's quite interesting in that that sense of being contained in sharp angles and hardness and density is then projected into this idea of materialism I think the theories that human beings come up with represent how they feel inside. So materialism is not some sort of logical conclusion of so-called scientific experiments. Not at all. If you look at the um, Indian myths, um, Shiva had a wife, uh, Parvati, and the idea that is passed down is that you know your wife should be like poverty like a goddess to you and your husband like shiva and you should have a glorious marriage as god and goddess but um that probably speaks of some very ancient time when people were actually like that but the um, the birth of the crystallization of the many eyes has reduced the Indian transmission to what it is today. So they still retain something, but on a much smaller level. The crystallization of the many eyes inside of the human population seems to be a worldwide disaster. I had the image of um, a bull whip as you flick it through the air although your hand moves just a little the energy widens as it travels down the whip if you remember Indiana Jones had one of these things it feels very much to me that there are very wide dissonant vibrations traveling into the heart of the world right now tearing it to pieces 
Anyway, um, as I've said many times before, if you would like to not perish with everybody else, I can only suggest you that you find any kind of ancient traditional practice taught by a still existing school, of which there are many, and there is no excuse not to find one. And practice like hell. You must do things that nobody else on this planet is prepared to do.